welcome to the first episode of series two of the Colliers podcast. Today, I'm being joined by Ed Dixon, who currently heads up ESG at Aviva Investors across their real assets platform. Um, he previously worked as the Sustainability Insights Director at Landsec. As a starting point, it'd be good to kind of talk through how you got into the role that you're in now. Um, and yeah. Well, if we, if we wind the clock back uh, by about 10 years, um, I've been working in real estate for quite a few years. That was sort of um, 2008, 2009. Um, and I'd been working in, in construction as a project manager and I was assigned to a project. It was Marks and Spencer Cheshire Oaks, which is uh, down near Chester in Ellesmere Port. And it's a, a beautiful building that's constructed out of glue land timber and it's sort of, you know, hemp filled <laughs> walls and beautiful landscaping and green walls everywhere. It's a really genuinely beautiful, sustainable building. And I was appointed to that project as a junior project manager. And, and um, I really just got into it from there. I, I saw how sustainable buildings can make people really happy. You know, the people that work in that store, the people that visit there um, to shop on the weekends, they, they absolutely love it. The schools that, that, that are nearby love visiting it to find out more about the building. And I think that just that made, made me just fall in love with, uh, with, with sustainable buildings. And then it all kind of spiraled from there. So um, I did a, a few years working on that project, um, then did some consulting in infrastructure um, and then got the, the role at Landsec and did around four years with them. And I think after a while, I realized that um, I wanted to get really to the heart of, of, of the problem. And I think money is the heart of the problem. You know, money makes the world go round, and, and that's um, the big thing that affects a lot of the trends and a lot of the, 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 the effects of the climate crisis that we're seeing around us. So Aviva was definitely the place to be, you know, asset management um, hold a lot of power um, in the system that we operate in. So I wanted to work for a big asset manager. The role came up at Aviva and here we go. That was uh, nearly a year and a half ago now. Has there been a big change moving from Landsec to Aviva? Yeah, massive. So the difference between the listed real estate side and, and the, the, the asset management side is enormous. I think yeah. in listed real estate, you know, it sort of seems so simple now. You've got one business, you know, you've got 100 assets, uh, <laughs> nice and simple, you know, long hold assets, long term investment, pre pretty straightforward. Um, tend to be bigger lot sizes as well, which just means that, you know, you've got you've got less to do, right, because there are less assets, yeah. whereas with Aviva, more assets for starters in real estate, but then you've also got the fact that it's a real assets platform. So you've got six, uh, seven different investment desks, um, six on top of the real estate desk that, that you know, the Colliers team would, would know us from. Yeah. Um, and that's everything from kind of private debt through to infrastructure, through to real estate debt and everything else in between. So it's a far more complex organization. And then below that level, you know, you've, you've got, you know, in, in scores of, of, of different funds. Um, so so many different entities and you're trying to balance the interests of those different entities across the business. So a much more complex environment to operate in is the main difference, I'd say. OK, and just going back a step, you said um, that you were initially interested by the sort of sustainable building side, sustainable development is that something that you're doing a lot more of now? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's the challenge is so different in asset management, right? Because we're not dealing with uh, a small number of probably quite sustainable buildings, which some of the kind of smaller, more high quality um, operators. So you're kind of Landsec, Great Portland Estates, British Land, they tend to have a smaller number of, of more sustainable, almost more prestigious buildings. Whereas asset managers have got a huge variation. You know, we deal with everything from industrial sheds through to hotels through to um, much smaller uh, lot size off office buildings. So we're dealing with a big variation. And actually, that's where a lot of the challenge is. You know, yeah. um, brand new, pristine, you know, bream outstanding buildings. That's not the challenge. The challenge is to get the existing building stock, you know, the, the, the majority of building stock in the UK and Europe to get it from where it is now, which is not performing very well to performing much, much better and fundamentally producing less carbon. Um, so it's, it's a much bigger challenge, uh, a much less glamorous challenge, if, if, if you will. You know, there are still some absolutely you know, beautiful standout sustainable buildings in the Aviva port portfolio, absolutely. Um, but it's not every single one. So the challenge is, is really different. And do you think that there's been a change um, in perspective to, I guess, social and corporate responsibility um, in recent years? Yeah, definitely. I think the biggest change that we've seen over the last decade, decade or so is the fact that businesses just can't hide anymore. So yeah. it used to be pre-social media and, and, and pre-iPhone uh, that the activities of businesses were really only you know, confined to 
people watching the markets, um, you know, the back pages of the Financial Times, people didn't really look too much at what businesses were actually up to. But now that you can get news feeds, you know, delivered straight into your inbox every morning, you can open up your, your iPad whilst you're sitting in bed and having breakfast or whatever, and you can, you can find out very quickly and very easily exactly what companies are, are up to. And I think that transparency is, is now there universally really and that's really really changed um, people's expectations of companies you know and that spreads into the media I think the media are becoming a lot more adept in um, holding companies to account when they when they do mess up and when they are acting not in, in the interest of, of their stakeholders so I think that's changed a lot and I think that means that there's a lot more focus on good governance you know companies being yeah. well run and that extends into our world you know real estate managers managing their portfolios in the right way and on creating social outcomes for for society you know if you're not fundamentally if you're mistreating your supply chain or if you're not acting in the best interest of the communities that surround your assets then i think you'll you know you'll be you'll be found out and hauled over the coals for it which is i think is a really good thing what kind of things are you pushing at Adiba on the sort of sustainability side the number one thing i would say that we're focused on at the moment is transition yeah so this is what i talked about before the challenge is not producing beautiful one-off new sustainable buildings. That's a great thing to do if, if you want to make money, absolutely. But it's not the, it's not the, the real lion's share of the challenge. Um, so we're focused really on, on the climate transition. So whether you, we're talking about real estate equity, you know, a portfolio of 350 buildings across the UK and a growing portfolio in Europe, or whether it's real estate debt, you know, where we're lending against hotels or, or, or industrial sites, um, or whether it's into infrastructure where we're directly building um, renewable energy infrastructure ourselves or um, whether we're funding that through infrastructure debt, really the focus has to be on transitioning away from fossil fuels, um, oil and gas and moving toward renewable energy um, technologies. And it has to be on buildings transitioning away from being, uh, you know, high, highly carbon emitting um, assets through to much more uh, efficient buildings that, that produce less carbon emissions. That is the, the number one challenge. And that manifests in a couple of ways. You know, it, it, it's both the way that we allocate capital. You know, we need to be on top of the way that our investment teams originate new deals and, and look for, for new opportunities. But we also be, not, need to be on top of the way that those come through our investment committees and the approvals that they get so that we're seeing the right money going towards the right sort of solutions. But also, and crucially for real estate, you know, we need to be managing our portfolio in the right way too. And that means putting resources toward the right capex spending, you know, the right sorts of projects, the right sorts of disposals if we're seeing assets that actually don't fit our plan long term. So it's really that relentless focus on the energy transition that's the big topic that we're tackling at the moment. And in terms of the future opportunities, I mean, what, what do you see ESG offering to the real estate sector as a whole? I think, you know, th there's, there's only really one answer to that and that's opportunity. So what I've heard a lot, you know, I've, I've been, I'm 36, nearly 37 now, and I've been working on and off in real estate since I was 16 in, 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 in one way or another. So that's 20, 21 years of experience. And what I've seen since the sustainability movement started in the sort of mid to late noughties um, through to, to now is a big shift in mindsets. So yeah. think back to kind of 2008, 2009, the way people thought about sustainability was, um, you know, it was almost exciting and it was a, it was, it was a new topic and, and, and everybody was sort of getting really excited about putting little windmills all over the top of their buildings. <laughs> um, and then sort of 2012, 2013, people were starting to think, oh, actually, well, this looks a bit cumbersome and there's a lot to do here and it sounds like it's going to cost a lot more. And I think that's, that lasted a long time, you know, I think right the way through until the last couple of years, people were really still seeing ESG and sustainability as something that cost more, where you just have yeah. to pay more and, and there's no return to it for it. I think in the last couple of years, and especially in the last, um, uh, the, the last year or so, that's really starting to change and people are starting to see the opportunity. Um, and I think people are starting to see that this actually is a commercial opportunity. Um, so that would be the number one um, thing that, that, that I think is, is super important for everybody to take away, you know, from, from this today and just generally from any conversation or any, any meeting that they have on sustainability or ESG with their colleagues. You always, always need to be in that mindset of thinking about where's the com commercial opportunity here? Where's the value? Yeah. Where's the payback? Because it is there. It's just we've been stuck in this kind of mindset of, oh, it costs more. And that's not the right way to think about this problem. Well, we are approaching the end of our episode, but I just thought it'd be OK if it's OK with you. We could finish on some quick fire questions. Um, 
Just a couple. So um, if you could replant a forest or regrow a coral reef, what would be your choice? I would definitely replant a forest. Trees, uh, we've lost our connection to trees. <laughs> <laughs> and we, need, we, we need to re-find it. I think, um, you know, fundamentally, this is going to be something that's crucial to, to, to the recovery of the, of the planet. Um, yeah. We need more trees. Um, we, 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 you know, we, we need a, a, a nice, uh, pleasant, more pleasant environment to live in and trees create that on multiple different levels in cities, you know, in rural areas. So definitely trees. Okay. Um, and if you could switch 100 homes or 100 vehicles to clean energy? Mm, that's a good question. I'd have to go with homes, given that that's what we're trying to, to do at the moment, <laughs> yeah. is to convert buildings to, to, to become more sustainable. Um, yeah. I think consumer preferences in electric vehicles are starting to take over now. And I think there's a real, you know, we, 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 they call it a norm shift, but it's becoming a lot more normal for people to think, well, why would I even need a, a diesel or an electric vehicle in the long run? They're going to be, they're going to be um, outlawed anyway. So I think that's already taken care of. I think the electric vehicle market is shifting. I think we're not quite there yet with, with homes and buildings. So definitely homes. Um, and then final question, just quickly, if you could recommend one thing for companies to do, um, to be more sustainable, what would that be? I would say think about the opportunity. This is this is the, the number one way of being able to pick a path and, and navigate your way as a company between where we are now and, and, and the future. And the future is going to be very, very different. You know, it's going to be a tougher yeah. environment for companies to operate in. But if you're focused on, you know, the, the old saying, skate to where the money will be. If you're focused on where the opportunity is and, and what sort of assets and what sort of products are going to be making money in the future. And I'll give you a clue. It's more sustainable. And if you work your way toward that as a company, I think you'll be putting yourself in a good place. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Um, it's been great to chat. And you can listen to any um, more episodes of Take 10 with Colliers in all the usual places. So Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Um, and to find out who we'll be talking to in the next episode, please check out our LinkedIn, Twitter and Instagram.